Not that kick he won't. No way. They'll have to return the pineapple. They'll mark that up near the 40-yard line at the 40. It's Terrell Davis starring in the Denver Broncos story. He did on the first drive with eight carries as the Broncos marched down the field, consuming half the quarter. It's remarkable when you think back 12 days ago, we watched him in terrible pain on the sideline, the ice down that shoulder, and knowing what a shoulder separation can do to you. I, I'm just amazed at what he's done here in the first quarter. From the 40, back to Davis. That's it back inside. Up to the 45-yard line. Seth Payne making the tackle. Going back to that first series right off the bat. They gave Davis the ball. He wound up carrying it eight times. And they also went to him as a pass receiver as well. But John Elway kept calling his number. He started the drive, and he finished the drive with a mile-high salute, made it 7-0. Keep in mind that in the first 14 games of the year when Davis was healthy, he carried the ball over 20 times a game in each one of those ball games. That's one heck of a workload for a running back. Second and five, and here is carry number 10. So he's already halfway there, and he's close to a first down, just a little shy of the 50. Hudson making the tackle. Hudson hit him about the 46-yard line. Davis has carried him for another three. He's a load. Good receiver out of the backfield, too. Up very close to a first down, so they'll bring the sticks out. Yep. They had 42 receptions on the year, Frank, and that's a lot of touches. And you can see why there was a lot of uncertainty here in Denver as to how productive Davis was going to be today. Boy, but what an impact. As you can see, a little short. A, a running game can have on your passing game, and you have to have the defense thinking run before they think pass rush. You're in good shape. Dick Duran, the defensive coordinator of Jacksonville, and with the offensive wet weapons that the Broncos have, the number one offense in the NFL, I, I don't think many people are volunteering, uh, volunteering for his job this week. Third down, inches. The Broncos are four for four on third down and make it five for five. Davis, 11 carries to the Jaguar 48-yard line. Tackled by Brian Schwartz. Jacksonville coming with a run blitz, filling every gap on their blitz, and still Terrell Davis was able to get the first. Word from Lynn Swan. Lynn. Well, I talked with Elway before the game about throwing it in this win. He said the problem will be throwing from left to right as you look at the field because the ball can trail off. But if you put some heat on it, it shouldn't be a problem. I said, do you talk to your running backs about that fact? He goes, yeah, I mentioned it to them, but they already know I throw a pretty hard pass. Hmm. Now, Yes, as McCaffrey found out in particular on that first series. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. And they keep calling number 30's number, this time a minimal game, tackled by Clyde Simmons. Which will end up being the best part of Denver's passing game is Terrell Davis. This running attack that they're working against Jacksonville right now is going to make play action, which we're going to see relatively soon, all the more effective. A dozen rushes already for Terrell Davis, and still over four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. That's a game for a lot of running backs in this league. Earlier this season in a game against the Chiefs, he had 13 carries in the first quarter. Second down and nine, four and a half minutes to go. And here is number 13. So five in a row on this series. And fresh as a daisy to the 37, but a marker goes down. Joel Smingy makes the tackle. And this one will come back. Bernie Kukar, our referee, threw the flag himself from behind the play. Holding number 66 on the offense. The 10-yard penalty, still second down. Um, Malin, the Pro Bowl center, and that'll negate another first down and a good pickup by Terrell Davis. Up 66 the is Tom Nalen right there. He was out in front. He's locked up on Ronaldo Wynn. Wynn trips and falls, and Nalen ends up going with him. A lot of that was the fact that Wynn went down and Nalen went with him, and it certainly did look like he took him down. So Derek Lavelle comes in as Davis goes out, second down and 19. The corner blitz, and Elway escapes. 
Buys time, hits Lavelle, and the X-49 er takes it to the 48. Derek is really their number three running back, but they want to save Hebron apparently with that tender hamstring for running back kicks, unless Lavelle is in there right now for the second time in the game. Lavelle made a few starts uh, for the 49ers for this man, Mike Shanahan, when he was the offensive coordinator there. He likes Lavelle. Good receiver out of the backfield, good running back. Turns this one into a nifty pickup, but leaves John in the passing situation. Vaughn Hebron along the sideline. He ran back the opening kickoff. But hasn't played in an offensive set to this point. Third down and eight. And coming across the line was Tony Brackens, the free one. Brackens in there as a pass rush specialist. Eddie Robinson falls on Elway. Well, Brackens not only went off sides, he's lucky he didn't hurt himself. In an attempt to stop, he does a uh, he does a full split. I tell you right now, Frank, if that was me, they'd be taking me off on the back of a cart. He really did do the splits. He tried, tried to, to throw, recover. He tried to throw out the air brakes. The air brakes, rather. Watch this. That's a nice little hook slide. No chance to get back. Seven sacks on the year for Brackens. A lot of it's based on upfield speed. Getting a good jump off the ball is a key part of that. That's what he's trying to get. Trying to anticipate the snap count. Four wides. Third down and three. Broncos thus far perfect. Five for five on third down. Elway guns it over the middle. And it is Rod Smith. Free and clear. Touchdown Denver. I don't know if that was a completed pass or if John Elway impaled Rod Smith with that football. He's had a lot of drops by Rod Smith. This time he stuck it in there. Jacksonville coming on a blitz. And it was a terrific read by Rod Smith and John Elway. They connect up, and he's gone. Were my ears betraying me, or could you hear that football hit Rod Smith? <laughs> Rod Smith had a bunch of drops earlier in the year, a few weeks ago, particularly against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, did you see him look that ball into his hands? They've been doing that in practice, talking about it, not making a big deal out of it where you're going to get hung up on it, but they have been working on it. We've seen some good catches today. Smith had 12 receptions for TDs during the regular season. Pretty much like last year, Denver with the early lead, 14-0. And 23-22 after trailing by 16 points at the half. And they become the first road team since the Cowboys at San Francisco in 72 to win a postseason game, overcoming that larger deficit. Vikings play at San Francisco next Saturday, and the winner of tomorrow's Detroit-Tampa Bay game plays at Green Bay next Sunday. Here's the kick of the score, 14 to nothing. Denver, and it floats down into the arms of Reggie Barlow from the 15-yard line. Barlow, who's becoming one of the best runback specialists in the league, shows you why as he takes it to midfield. Exactly what Jacksonville needed at this point to get back in the game. Tackled by McKayer, but Elway's been sharp. And with two and a half to go in the quarter, 14 to nothing. Rod Smith going all the way here. Had that worked on during the commercial break? I'd say those uh, statistics we saw would support a Denver lead. Well, pretty much like last year when the Broncos led 12 to nothing on two touchdowns. They scored last year, had the extra point blocked, then scored again, and went for two points and were successful. And by the half, Jacksonville had the lead. From the 49-yard line, on the ground, Natron Means, it's a pickup of four. And this is what they need to get back to, Natron Means. He had 140 yards rushing a year ago and controlled the clock and the game along with quarterback Mark Brunel, but he had a big game as they rolled for over 200 yards on the ground against Denver, but that was a year ago. But they need to go back to it. Second and six from the 45-yard line. Brunel stepping up takes it to the 40-yard line. A lot of mobility. Mark Crunel stopped by Neil Smith. It'll be third down and one. Ma Tanovasa also in on the tackle. And, and Crunel shaking. Oh, yeah. He's getting up a little tentatively. He wears a brace on his right knee. He doesn't like it, but they tell him, you're going to wear it until we tell you you can't wear it. And Neil Smith comes back in from the right side, and he watch how awkwardly Brunel kind of lands after he jumps 
through that tackle by Neil Smith. He also got hit on the back after he was down. Third and one. And Verdell throws it, but behind Willie Jackson. Well, I'll tell you, they got a lot of confidence in Brunel on third and one when you've got Whoa, Nate Nate John Means in the backfield. You're exactly right in this win. Exactly. Offensive, into it. offensive coordinator Chris Palmer had to be tempted to hand it to his 250-pound running back. Look at that ball. Whoa. And they, they're thinking about going. At least Brunel was. He was staying out on the field, and now they'll bring Barker out the punt. Wow, down 14 to nothing and still without a first down. There are only two possessions, three and out, even with great field position here. Well, Chris Palmer, I'm sure, was tempted to give it to Nate Ron Means. Brian Barker to punt. Should have. And Darian Gordon back to receive it. Play clock had expired, but that will not make much of a difference for Jacksonville. There is no penalty. We will reset the game clock to 25 seconds. Boy, down 14 to nothing as we reset the clock here. Not converting when you start a drive down 14 to nothing in your opponent's territory, not even getting a first down. That, that, that's a critical failure for Jacksonville. Uh, there has to be a part of Tom Coughlin that must be thinking about going for it here. You're, obviously, they're punting, but boy, they can't let this game get out of hand. Barker's kick, he angles it, and that will turn out to be a very good one. It will be marked at the eight-yard line. And that's where Denver will take over. And it's time now for the Home Depot coaches fact. Mike Shanahan with a 41 and 27 mark in regular season games. Highest regular season percentage by any NFL coach who's winless in postseason. Now, Dennis Green was actually second in that category <laughs> until about an hour ago. He's off the side. Yes. <laughs> Congratulate Dennis Green, but also Jim Fossil of the Giants on a great season for the Giants winning that division. Sweeping the division, they had a remarkable year. Danny Bert. Green was what, 0 and 4? He was. From the eight yard line, Terrell Davis for a gain of two. And Mark Brunel can only hope that it's easier to throw the ball going the other way. We mentioned before that the wind is coming out of the north, which is left to right as we look at this field, but it's a swirling wind, and clearly Brunel's had a lot more trouble finding the mark with his passes than has Elway going the other way. Well, it seems that way, too. And, Al, when you go from left to right as we look at the field, you're going to the what is the open end of the field. Knowing that, all the more reason to bang in there with means on a, on a third and short. Absolutely. Instead of, instead of throwing on third and one. Second and eight, they give it to Davis. And Terrell up to the 11-yard line, setting up another third down where the Broncos have been perfect at this point. Six for six on third down. Payne makes the tackle. Let's go back and take a look at a couple of the efforts of Mark Brunel. This time, uh, look at that ball just spin and tail away to the right. And yep. again, throwing it out to his left, the ball again. These are not electronic tricks. Nope. That is not an optical illusion. The ball is really moving that much. End of the first quarter, a perfect one for the Broncos. It's Denver 14, Jacksonville. Yeah. Look how steady that blimp is in the wind up there. That's <laughs> yes. The most beautiful mountains in the world, some of the great ski areas in the world for sure. In reverse as well. <laughs> New Year's Day, here's a reminder, three bowl games, the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, Florida against Penn State, the Rose Bowl, Michigan and Washington State, and Nokia Sugar Bowl, Florida State and Ohio State. And it One, all two, starts three. with the Rose Bowl parade. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, New Year's morning, Thursday, Denver from the 12 on third down. Smith gets free, makes the catch, taken down in Jacksonville territory, beats Beasley. I don't know what Beasley was thinking about. He was looking, staring into the backfield. Well, John Elway right now is saying, well, it's supposed to be a problem throwing the ball going this direction. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Beasley thought he was going to have help deep or not. He gets caught looking into the backfield. Rod Smith is 
just blows right by him. First play of the second quarter, John Elway didn't seem to have much of a problem going into the win. Not at all. Davis from the 48 picks up one. Davis has now carried the ball 15 times for 51 yards, and the numbers for the first quarter will certainly reflect the one-sidedness of the period on the scoreboard as well. They're either beautiful or ugly, depending upon your zip code. Mm -hmm. Look at the time of possession. Speaking of zip codes, 2 well, 3 -0, 1 2 3 -0. Jacksonville still without a first down. And Denver up by 14 and in Jacksonville territory, second down and nine from the 47-yard line. LA gets it away. For Griffith, the blocking back, incomplete, covered by Schwartz. This wild card game is being brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Bud Light, if you want great taste, it won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. And the Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan in Denver. The Broncos have been bucking to this point. 14 0 and on the move again. In that area of the field where Mark Grinnell had problems throwing the football, the open end of the field coming up past situation for Owen. John threw into the wind that time off to the left that was behind his receiver. Third down and nine. Guns it over the middle. Caught by Willie Green to the 25 yard line. It's inside Beasley. I think this win prefers a right hand spiral. Perfect shot to Willie Green, the pickup from Carolina. During the offseason, we talked about the numerous changes that Denver made after losing to Jacksonville last year, and a good move by Willie Green. He's big, strong, he'll battle for the football. He goes about 6-4. And again, the key to it, Dan, protection. Absolutely. So far in this football game, Denver's offensive line has been dominant. Six more, and this time the coverage is good. McCaffrey, the intended receiver, Travis Davis, and Dave Thomas converging on him. Dave Thomas, he's big. We talked about it a few moments ago. He's 6'3 and about 215 pounds, and he just got right in front of McCaffrey and just dared McCaffrey to run through it. Dave Thomas, who broke his leg a year ago in the fifth game. Watch this. He gets right in front of McCaffrey. Maybe use a little bit of a hand, but he kept McCaffrey from coming back to the football. Good coverage. On second and ten, Jaguars across the line. Davis takes the handoff. Well, I'll tell you what, Howard Griffith, the fullback for the Broncos, was also moving towards the line of scrimmage. He's been doing that, Dan, with regularity, and he have not yeah, you, been calling it either. You could get a motion call against Denver, I think, easily out of this as well. But they don't. Yes, yes they do. We did get him. Both. Yeah. So he, offsetting. He's been coming dangerously close to that throughout Offside, the first quarter. Number 37 on the defense, illegal motion. Number 29 on the offense, penalties offset, still second down. Yeah, it looked like Howard Griffith uh, almost uh, in some way misjudged the snap count because he makes a, a serious move. He's the man in motion here. Now watch him start towards. There's the flinch by Jacksonville, and Griffith takes two steps forward all the way up into that guard center gap. That movement by Griffith was what actually drew Jacksonville off. And he started going to the line of scrimmage. They came. Second down and 10. Elway, a little shovel pass, and Davis runs right into number 51, Kevin Hardy, the second guy picked in the draft, the linebacker a couple of years ago. Around Jacksonville, a lot of people saying, when's Hardy going to step up? He's been pretty quiet this far this season. Don't tell Davis. Well, he stepped up and stepped right into the hole where Terrell Davis was trying to go. This is just a, a good call, a little twist move from the outside looping back to the inside and if Hardy gets there a half a second before we might have had uh, we might have had a loose football third and 13 this is Denver's 30th play of the game the Jaguars have won six Elway guns it and it's caught by Smith and he picks up the first down and Denver is nine for nine on third down when John Elway threw a brilliant strike that ball perfectly 
spiraling, and that is the best way to take the wind off the football, keep it in a tight spiral. Deep downfield to Rod Smith, he really had something on it, and this will be a great look at it. Again, the fine protection, look at that, that, that just smoked into Rod Smith. Well, down seven to nothing. Jacksonville had a thumb in the dike. Down 14 to nothing. They got their whole hand in the hole. They're on the verge of having the dike fall on top of them right now. From the 12-yard line, Davis inside the 10. Davis down to the 5-yard line. Matt Bolin, the owner of the Broncos for so many years, has lived through so many postseason games, both wonderful and horrible. And this one's starting out in the former category, at least at the moment. Now there's such a genuine affection. Pat Bowl and the quarterback John Elway, they don't quite know what John's going to do after this season. But somehow or other, they plan on him staying with this organization. Second down and three. Shanahan expects him to be back. Davis. Touchdown, Denver. 92 yards. And most of it against the win. For 51 weeks, the Denver Broncos have pointed themselves towards this game. And I said at the top about how much pressure comes with that. And Lynn Swan asked Mike Shanahan, can they translate that energy into something positive on the field? Well, so far, I think the answer to that question is a, is a resounding yes. And there is no question about the physical ability of this man, Terrell Davis, with an incredible first half. Jason Elam converts. 92 yards, 11 plays. 10.46 left in the half. Denver 21, Jacksonville nothing. The Rocky Mountains. And it's beautiful in Mile High Stadium for these fans right now. A perfect start for the Broncos. Leading 21 to nothing. Jason Elam's kick. Fielded at the three-yard line. This is Mike Logan. And he gets picked up. At the 20 by Darius Johnson. Second and eight. From the 23-yard line. Cornell throws, and it's low, but Jimmy Smith is there to come back and get it at the 28-yard line. Good read between Cornell and Jimmy Smith. Blitz on on the part of Denver. The Jaguars picked it up, and Jimmy Smith broke it off, and they get the completion. And Gordon... The cornerback to that side giving a huge cushion when he knows his team is blitzing. Wonderful job by Smith of making that catch. He kept it off the ground, but Darian Gordon way too far off the ball. You know it's going to be a short pattern. Third down and three. Looking for their first first down, and they get it at the 35-yard line. Great protection enabled Brunel to hit Pete Mitchell, the tight end, for a first. And nobody happier than every member of Jacksonville's defense. They broke That's a barrier, a first down barrier. They get one. Let us get our wits about us. Let us get our breath and see if our offense can keep the football for a while. Nice, safe, battered. Mitchell sits down in the soft part of the zone. They need a whole bunch of those in a row. who's had a very hot month of December up to the 40-yard line, tackled there by Ray Crockett. And yet that's his first catch thus far of the game, isn't it? The, the leading receiver with 85 receptions coming into this. Not a big receiver, but on the outside, neither one on the outside, Smith or McCardell, but they have great hands and terrific speed. And that was a good open field one-on-one -on -one tackle by Ray Crockett certainly the best cover guy of the Denver secondary. He's had a really fine year for Denver. On second and six. Good protection again. Smith makes the catch. Busts tackles. Picks up a first down. Gets it to the Denver 45-yard line. Tackled by Mobley. Oh, and he breaks the tackle of Bill Romanowski and gets the first down in doing so. Jimmy Smith and both these wide receivers run well after they catch the football both of them over 1200 yards over a thousand yards on receiving look at that little burst to the inside for a first down 
to the Jaguars with a little bit of a spark now trying to get back into the game go back to the ground give it to Means and Natron works it to the 41 yard line where he's tackled by Mobley means uh, this season missing a lot of time with a, a sprained ankle still gained more than 800 yards but did not have a single run of more than 20 yards this year and didn't have a 100 yard game all year long in fact his last 100 yard effort was here 51 weeks ago when he had 140 against the Broncos and his yards per carry reflect that injury now only 3.4 per rush Second and six, Brunel underneath. It's a juggling catch made by Means. He gets to the 39, setting up a third and four. Smith and Aldridge converge on the tackle. Jacksonville playing it very smart. Offensive coordinator Chris Palmer calling probably the plays that they had down. They haven't got through their list yet, I'm sure. And why change it? Get back <laughs> in the game. Uh, get yourselves uh, Something on the scoreboard, go in at halftime, regroup, and uh, come back out, and you got a new ball game. They know they can come back as they look once again at Neil Smith. If they've got 20 plays on their script, they may still be working off that script in the third quarter. Well, they keep looking at it. I, I, I don't think they're through it yet. Meanwhile, Denver ran out of script after that first drive. That first drive was 15 plays. Injury timeout for Smith, 623 left of the half, 21 nothing. Denver. Dodge Ram gives you the goes and you know the one thing we should point out too is that even though Jacksonville beat Denver last year the Broncos have not lost any other game in this stadium for two years apart from that one. Take a look at the entire John Elway era. I can speak firsthand. No tougher place in the NFL to win than Mile High Stadium. Third down and three. And Brunel going deep into double coverage and incomplete but a flag comes in but Cardell was sandwiched between Braxton and Gordon I sure didn't see any violation at the conclusion of this play looked like there wasn't any contact till afterwards Number 23 on the defense yeah, they get Darian Gordon for using his hands but he came a long way to get involved in that double coverage yeah, he oh, did. Right no there. Okay, it. you're right. He did. He had his right hand on McCardell's left shoulder. When he had the help yeah. on the inside, he really didn't need to do this. No. Braxton is in good position no. to make the play. No, I didn't see it properly. That's a that's a very good call by the official. It just it, it's really kind of senseless. You've got the help from the safety. You know you got help deep. Really doesn't gain much to reach out and put your hand on the guy's shoulder pad. And, and bicep. Exactly. 34-yard penalty. First and goal. Natron Means. To the one-yard line. Mobley makes the hit. Second and goal inside six minutes remaining in the first half. And Jacksonville with a good drive from their own 20-yard line. This is what they needed to do. Get a little confidence. Put some points up on the board. Go in at halftime. You're a little closer. You know you can do it. And you know you've done it before and come back out and you play a different football game in the second half and it can't happen. Neil Smith is back in the game second down and goal from the one. Means. No signal. Well it sure looked like he was in there. Yep. there. No signal yet from the officials. Will there be a late signal. Yes. <laughs> Touchdown. Looked like the whole Jacksonville offensive team was in the end zone. Ty Halleck led the way with a block. And Bichelli gets into it with Mike Lodish. And Alfred Williams, his, uh, his size, uh, counterpart most of the game. Size of this offensive line, they couldn't even see means. And when Natron gets lost, you're talking about getting lost amongst them, some big people. So the penalty on Gordon.